Hi everyone, my name is Rafael Bicalho and I'm here to explain the aspects of crisis management framework. Crisis management is the process by which organization deals with a situation that may represent a loss of value to them or to the stakeholders involved in the process. This study started in the 80s after a series of large-scale industrial and environmental disasters. For example, the Exxon oil leakage in Alaska, the Bofal gas leakage in India, and Chernobyl explosion in Ukraine. Of course, any corporation hopes not to face the situation that may cause a significant business disruption, which stimulates extensive media coverage. The public scrutiny that is the result from this media coverage often affects the normal operation of the company and can have a financial, political, legal, and governmental impact, most of the time negatively. Substantial value destruction is to be feared of, especially when the crisis is not handled well with the media or the public opinion. So, with these thoughts in mind, we can define crisis management as a plan deployed to control the situation and give the correct answer to each and every stakeholders involved in it, precautionary, structural, and ad hoc. Crisis management consists of different aspects including methods used to respond both facts of a crisis and the perception from each stakeholder, establishing metrics to define what scenarios constitute a crisis and how they will trigger the necessary response mechanisms, communication that occurs within the response phase of emergency management scenarios. The numerous points can be included in the crisis management plan, but we are going to discuss the six most important points that need to be included in the plan in order to be successful. First point is, prepare contingency plans in advance. Things can be formed at a very short notice, rehearsing of crises of various kinds. And second, immediately and clearly announce internally what team members will be responsible for the communications about the crisis to the outside world. And third, move quickly. The first hours are the key factor to the success in managing the crisis because the media often build upon the information within the first hours. In fourth, use crisis management consultants. Public relations consultants are excellent resources, considered to bring in specialist corporate image expertise. In fifth, give always accurate and correct information. Trying to manipulate information about the crisis will seriously backfire if it is discovered, also internally in your company. Sixth, when deciding open actions, Considering not only the short-term losses, but focus also on the long-term effects. Executives at all levels of the organization are employed to manage crises and often do so on a daily basis. Their skills are really tested when they have to manage significant crises. The most effective crisis management occurs when the potential crises are detected and dealt quickly, before they can harm the organization business. In those instances, they never come to the attention of the key stakeholders or to the general public. Despite efforts to control all situations, scenarios involving other players might also affect similar organizations or the ones which has related operations. In situations where the crisis are already erupted, a business continuity plan is helpful to curb the losses. Although it seems to be a daunting task, it's a common sense document involving all the critical functions and process to the business. Then designing the operation and communication contingency plans to deal with the plantation failure and how key stakeholders will react when they find out about it. Corporations with business continuity plans are in the better position to minimize impacts and financial damage caused by these situations. Now, let's analyze Anglo-American crisis management system. And as an example, let's use the response plan to some macro incident occurring in November 5th in 2015. The San Marco incident occurred in Bento Gonçalves, a small sub-district of city of Mariana in Brazil. The Fundão containment net suffered a rupture, leaking a wave of 60 million cubic meters of slurry that destroyed the village and polluted the Rio Doce, a 300-mile land river. The causes of the incident are still being investigated by government and regulation agencies. Anglo America and Samaco have a lot of similarities in their business. Both companies are iron ore mining focused. Their extracting activities are in mountain regions with similar containment structures. Both are surrounded by small sub districts and subjected to the same state regulations. 
So, San Marco incident represent a huge fixed factor for Anglo-American operations. Anglo-America already had a crisis management team in place, and this allowed them to prepare the response plan in a matter of hours with all critical processes and functions, to give a structured answer to key stakeholders in the wake of the crisis. Further, more details were included to keep track and control of the situation. The response plan to San Marcos crisis was structured as the following. Specialists in corporate communications were the responsible for coordinating the efforts of the plan, to identify communication channels and develop strategies for each public, deal with the media, and identify the spokesman for the company. Designated lawyers were responsible to analyze all active lawsuits and all other legal processes that would be affected by the crisis. Sustainable development analysts took the task of check all requirements for licensing and all pending points from previous license as well. Government specialists started to keep tracking on all federal and state governmental requirements, and other public relations consultants located in the city was tracking local community leaders and mayors. Complementary, safety team prepared an evacuation plan, checked all safety structures and deployed a plan for simulations. Operations, hydrogeology, geology, and construction teams were working together to develop a plan including all the parameters, constraints, and what-if scenarios in order to fit communications team with accurate and correct inputs. With a broadened function, the sea level were providing the necessary support and resources for the team to achieve their goal of keeping control of the situation and minimizing the impacts in the business. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope that I helped you to understand all the aspects of the crisis management framework. See you soon.